uh, in the previous sessions. I think you can remember. Okay. So is that just a recording or? I think it's just a recording. Okay, so let's start. So in this uh, week also, we, uh, you've just got the introduction to the challenge. You got the data of uh, different parameters in order to decide uh, a good place, right? Depending on the weather and something, right? So it means that we still have the data and we're going to deal with data. So as you have already know, um, the best thing or the the end line or the end object objective of de dealing with data is in order to have a good insight about something specific issues, a good insight, a good view, and in order to decide a good decision based on the data. So what do we need to do with the data? So what are we um, like numbers? Numbers tail, right? But also numbers might not, might not tail. So in order for the numbers to tell the right thing or in order to have the right type of uh, recommendations or insights from the numbers or, for, or from the calculations that we're, we're going to have or from the graphs that we're going to see, we need to deal with that data first. We need to be sure that whether we have the clean data, the right data, and be sure whether the data that we're using are going to take uh, a true recommendations. So we need to be careful about the data handling or the first thing, which is the data cleaning. Um, Okay, be sure whether the we're dealing with the right data. So the first one is be sure handling missing values. So we're going to have the data that are co collected using different methods, right? Maybe from the government, maybe from different websites and from different places. So uh, you might not be sure from the beginning that the data are really, like, the, the data might, are not, uh, the, they're not going to be perfect. So we might not be able to make them perfect, but we will try to make them as, you know, compatible or feasible as we can by taking some measures. So we can see, we might see different or many missing values. So if you can go, if you go through the data that we already have on the, for the, this week's challenge, you can see that there are different or some missing values in the, on some features, the sulfur dioxide, the nitrogen dioxide, the carbon monoxide, and the ozone, those spe especially those columns, they might handle different missing values. And you need to decide. That's the main thing. You need to decide how am I going to deal with that, with those missing values, okay? Uh, so for the data cleaning, we have, you have different data cleaning methods. So if those data are that important on the decision that we're going to make or on the things that we're going to see, uh, then we need to make some uh, measurements. So depending on the percentage of missing value, which means you're going to see the numbers, how, how much amount of the, that data or that feature is missing, how much data is available, either fill them with appropriate statistics, which means if the data is normally distributed or uh, if it is not even normally distributed based on that decisions, we're going to use maybe their, mini, their median or the mode, okay? So it's not going to be okay to go with an empty a data set that, that have an empty uh, sales in some features, okay? So you're not going to use this, but for like future use, you might also use some sophisticated methods like there's a method called k and imputations, or maybe also there is this, yeah, there are different methods, okay? We're going to see the, there's also a method called z-score to see some outliers, but you might not use the complicated, that com like sophisticated or complicated methods here, but you can use the easy ones, the mean, the median, the inter mode, or maybe removing that data might also be a, the right decision depending on uh, your data, which is yeah, removal. If significant portion of the data is missing in a specific column or row, consider removing those rows or the columns if they don't provide subst substantial information, which means maybe that column and that column doesn't provide that uh, like a good amount of information or also, uh, also maybe it might be that small and just from leaving it uh, empty or for uh, not dealing with it, we're going to remove that. But removing that uh, empty sets, we remove all the columns. That's understandable, right? All the rows, I mean, all the rows included in that. Even if the parameters on other features are filled, we're going to remove that, the, all the rows. 
on that column too, that if it is small and if it's not that substantial, we can remove the column. And also we could remove the duplicates, which means while collecting the data, if it is not clear, they might put the same amount of data like many times, okay? It might be, it might be right, okay? Like for example, if we just consider the carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide amount of specific area, different areas might have the same amount of carbon dioxide, but you need to differentiate if that data, if that duplication is had happened because of uh, error or mistake or if it is the real data okay so check for duplicates identify duplicate row based on the date hour size id cities remove duplicates which means remove any duplicates entries to avoid skewed analysis results which means it's going to bring the data in towards what's going to be as the data or our inside okay just we need to be careful on the on, on this case because i see some there are many uh, duplicated data and the outlier detection that I have mentioned before, outliers, outliers means maybe like I'm not sure if we have discussed those types of uh, things before. Yeah, but outliers means like if the data is very different from that specific state. Okay, for example, let's say if, if we are, it's not in this case, if we are dealing with page value, of course, you're going to expect numbers from one to seven, right? So if you get 15, that is really an outlier. So, which means outlier means a data or a value that is really different, that is so different with the number that we're expecting. But in this case, uh, the numbers like uh, they are not, we, probably most of us are not going to be familiar that much with the numbers and they might even be in decimal, they are in decimal places. So, that it's, it, it might not be that easy to differentiate the outliers manually or not. So, just you need to understand the numbers, okay? Uh, that is what I mean. So it might not be that it's uh, a problem, but if there is a big outlier or a big difference, maybe like you're in on on the on this case, maybe on the PM two five case, those all the numbers are in forty sixty five on two digit numbers. Okay, if we have got just get a decimal place on this it on this column, most probably this is an outlier. You can just differentiate outliers in this method. Also, you can go to, there are some methods called finding the z-score. It will get the range in order to get the range of uh, that column. Or like, it's going to put, you know, maybe you're going to take 80% of this data so that the 20% most probably will be an outlier. It just, there are some methods so you can con calculate an outliers. But maybe, um, so like if if you're going to take 80% of the whole data, but what if the data is doesn't have an outlier from the beginning? So it, there might be this kind of issue. So just like I, I would recommend you to just go through the data in your eye or just you can put some range based on your decisions and things like that. And but you need to identify if the data have some outliers. Okay. So yeah, there is the outlier detection and then uh, the handle outliers depending on context, context either remove outliers or use capping methods to limit their impacts so you, we, we might cap them like just for the the same thing that we have done with the empty values or with the null values you can do that too for the outliers and then the data visualization which we have seen the on the previous sessions data visualization we've seen data visualization using google sheet on the previous Stations, if you remember, so just we need to, we will make some easy visualizations so that we can tell or we can talk about the data. And this part it will be easy for you. So just let's try to see maybe handling missing value and going through or putting some numbers like the, their mean, their median, and their mode. Okay, this is the copy of the data that we've got. Uh, I can just make another copy now because so that's. Okay. okay. Um, so, um, on for probably for data visualization, Google Sheet is nice. Maybe for the handling the missing values and like handling the data as a general, you can also use. You might. You can't actually. It's better if you can use Google Sheets for this experience. But for the future experience, you can also use Google Excel, right? It's it might be uh, powerful in some aspects. 
So on the data that we have so many uh, missing values, right? Maybe in this rows, or especially on the parts that are related with the uh, air chemistry, we have so many empty values. So for example, for the nitrogen dioxide, we can click all the column and you can use the, on the data part, we, you can use the data clean, the data cleanup for many things. Okay, for example, cleanup suggestions, we, we're not going to have that suggestions that we can go to the review column stats. Here, we can see all the statistics, which is the, uh, the frequency of the, those values. There are those this values 22 times. Okay, this is the frequency, but better than that, there is total rows of 8,074 8 rows. There are 4,969 empty cells, which is really not small. And unique values are 722, which means numbers that are not duplicated. All the sum of those values are is here. The average means the mean value. We have the median value. We have the minimum and the maximum value, okay? Also, we can have the graph here. So depending on the graph, you can differentiate whether it's normally distributed graph or not. So by what do we mean by normally distributed graph it is um, actually not only graph, in general, normally distributed data. It's the data that will, okay, actually it was really nice if you can see a graph. Let's just see normally distributed histogram. So those, those are data, so if we have graphed them or if we have the mini graph for they will have those structures okay so which is there there will be a major or many values in the middle and they are symmetric for each with each other okay those types of data are called normalized data if on this uh, histogram you can just put that curvy line here and it's not going to align through the histograms right most of the data here are not uh, normalized data actually you need to make the analysis but you, you need to see whether they are normalized or not after like understanding what normalized uh, normally distributed data are so if they are normally distributed data then it's okay to take the mean value for of all the data or the mean value that we have calculated or have here for all the data and just put the mean values instead of the empty uh, cells do you get my point so that's it's going to be, since the, the number here, if it was collected properly, it's going to be in the range of this. It's okay to put the mean value here. Or it's recommended if the data are not in, uh, are not normally distributed data, we can go with the mode value, okay? So that we can replace the empty cells with the mode value. So like, it's just your decision. You can replace those values with the mode. Also, you can just remove those empty cells, which is if you're removing those six, it's going to remove all the rows, right? Including every features. So you need to understand the data, the definition of the data and see what number of the data is missing and decide whether you, it's better to remove the data or it is better to replace them with another data. So oh, but most in most cases, we're going to go with removing the data. I think, in my opinion, if the data are not, if the if the data or if the missing values are not too much, right? So in this case, four thousand is too much. So in order to remove four thousand data, it need to be those data need to be uh, uh, unuseful, okay? So yeah, we can just take this. Uh, maybe there's something that I want you guys to try, but I will mention it later. So, so yeah, we can just remove or uh, do the imputation or uh, replace them uh, with the mean or the mode value. Okay, also, uh, this is the data. This is the copy of data two. Okay, also dealing with those values. We can also go, as we mentioned earlier, with the duplicated values, right? So again, to the data, we can go to the data cleanup and remove the duplicates. So there is, since we have a data header, like the, the header or the first row of the data, we need to indicate that we have a data header now and they remove duplicates. So look, it's from those 
five, there's 5385 duplicate loads found and removed okay which is 260 2687 of unique roast remains it's very large number of data to remove right so um again as i mentioned earlier you need to decide whether to remove the data or to do to make another decisions so if it, if I, I can go with okay we can just go with the we can just go with removing the duplicated data here okay so in this case we're just removing all, all the duplicated data from the specified column column which is the other parameters are remaining there. So which means we need to be sure whether the emptiness of this data is not going to affect. Uh, so or the, we, we can also replace the data removed with the mean or the mode values rather than being duplicated. Okay. So yeah, there is also the outlier detection. As I mentioned before, you can use the other complicated or sophisticated method or you can just go through here in the format. We can just go to the conditional formatting. Um, so like, what is the point of duplicated items is it's going to apply for all the column, which is not empty, which is empty. Okay, so it's, this one is highlighting the data that are an outlier, okay? So that we can see which data or which, uh, how many, how much part of the data is, is going to be um, a doubtful data, specifically in this case for the sulfur, the sulfur dioxide situation or depending on this parameter, how um, what amount of the data is going to, we're not going to be sure about it. Or, so we can put format rules, which is, as empty text does not contain, if, if we need it to be contain text or something, is equals to is between, is not, like, like this is value or formula, this and this, if, if it is the, if the value is between those two rings, then it's going to be considered as uh, an outlier and it's going to be highlighted so that in order, before like, removing all the outliers method or right, it's another method of just removing the outliers. We can just highlight the outliers so then we can see how um, what amount of the data is doubtful. Okay. Here the the empty values are outlined, so we can just see the data depending on the number of the data or the maximum range of the data. You can see that it's we're good. To, we might be good to go since most of the data are fulfilled. Okay. And then by, by after doing those types of easy analyzations or the, the, the data handling, then we can go to the visualization part. Um, again, uh, yeah, the data visualization, you are going to graph or put two parameters, that, which are, like, which one is depending on the other. Mostly on this case, maybe you're deciding uh, the city or the place where the company is going to be moved, right? So. Probably the city against the date, the C or the country against the date. Uh, the country against most of the chemicals or like, yeah, the air. We need we can call them chemicals actually. Most of the chemicals that are going to be the most harmful. Okay, so we can just insert charts. Yeah, let's go with the line charts for this case for the data range. And add another range, maybe the city here. Okay. So, is not this okay? Let's do the graph again. Let's choose, let's go with the line chart on the data range. Let's continue the, uh, let's draw the first, like the I or the sulfur dioxide part with against the country or the city, which is another range will be the country. Country. Okay. So yeah, here it's the data against the the country again is the that specific chemical is we've drawn that um yeah we can actually 
think it's going to be the same. We need to find the aggregate value, right? Rather than just the graph being up and down. We can just express it in this way, but maybe if it is, okay, let's try in the pie chart. So in, in, in it was supposed to be aggregated. I don't know why it is not coming here, but. Not here too. So there is yeah, let's just try it one more time. So still we're just putting the graph, but if it could have been better if it is aggregated or if we can see, for example, if the countries are Nigeria, Uganda, they are Nigeria, Uganda, and Kenya. So that we're going we can be able to count all the countries individually. And here again, on an empty space, we're going to draw the, insert the chart. Chart. And the line chart, whatever it is. It was, so yeah, I am not sure where the, we're supposed to have the aggregate button here. Maybe let's change some values or okay for J and for country. Okay. Yeah, I, I am sure that, that you're going to find the aggregate button here on your case because it was also I was also working with that. So that we can see the data in a really uh, clean way, or we can we can see we can take an insight from that. It might be somehow complicated to take the data in this way, right? x-axis is let's say the country yeah here we go it's going to be better in this way rather than that yeah so that we can see how what, what amount of uh, against what we, we draw the like, against the sulfur dioxide right so what amount of that chemical is on there in those specific countries so this data is going to be more clearer so in using those methods or different methods we can see that we can represent the our data visually so yeah, this is the whole presentation. Thank you. So let's hear from you. So any questions or confusions? Okay, then, so we were going to make the, good luck with the easy steps of the data handling and then the graphical representation. Then we can, you can proceed to the other tasks. Thank you everyone for being here. Yeah, and goodbye. So maybe would you recommend creating different Google Sheets for each country? Um, that's uh, that's not going to be difficult since there are only four countries. Yeah, it would be it would be a good thing to do that since um, the core point of the task or the assignment is to choose the country. Every graph, every representation, and every overview that you're going to take is going to be based on the city or the country, right? So yeah, 
it's 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 going to be a good idea to uh, create different Google Sheets for each country, for each country with different parameters. But what I'm worried is like containing the four countries and dealing with every parameters like the actually you're not supposed to deal with every parameters just focus on the features that you can see that you can say are important and so yeah dealing with every uh features that's going to be a lot so i recommend dealing with all country taking all the countries on uh, as the as one as in the one axis and the other parameters the other features in the other axis and for maybe for all the important few features so, so do you get my point? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, bye everyone.